call it the game room. Welcome to In the Game Room. I am Alan, and I am in the game room, or what will soon be the game room. This is uh, the room in Knoxville, in our new home, and I'm just getting it set up. As you can see, I have a piece of plywood here, or particle board, on top of a couple of boxes. Uh, this is the gaming table for now. Uh, starting to get some of the bookshelves put up. I got the workbench up. It's a bit of a mess, but it's up. So things are happening here, and I was really looking forward to get back into podcasting. So here I am. Uh, the trip over here was, it was rough. It was four days of driving. Uh, I've done it quicker. I did it in my truck in uh, just over 34, 36 hours or something straight through. But in the big moving truck, it was four days and, and three nights. And it was a little rough, but we got here and got everything unpacked and a lot of stuff still in boxes, but it's all happening and it's all good. The shop is up and running, all the lasers are running fine and everybody's happy. So what I want to do tonight was uh, just talk to you about a couple of things that have come out uh, in gaming uh, over the last couple of weeks or so. Some pretty exciting things because I'm excited to open these and I haven't yet because I want to do it with you guys. This is the new starter set for Star Wars Legion. It is the Star Wars Legion Clone Wars. I believe that's what they just call it, the Clone Wars starter. And it just came out on October 18th, which was just, I think, about a week ago. So, I'm excited. I want to get this thing open and see what's in it. Just like their other starter, I think, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it's 99 bucks. I think that's the retail price. And it should be it should be everything you need to get started playing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, that's, a, that's a tight box. What? Oh. So, um... As with the other starter box that came out uh, about a year ago or so, it starts with the uh, learning how to play book, which is basically the uh, the rules for the game, and a tutorial and a little bit about putting the miniatures together and painting them and whatnot. And of course, it comes with a whole bunch of markers, just like the other set. It comes with a set of like barricades that you can hide behind, a whole bunch of Bases? Oh, it's the first time I've seen bases in two different colors, so that must be significant. All the dice you need to get started. The cards. Other cards. And, okay, so here are the, uh, the movement templates. These are the ranging sticks. These are the larger bases for uh, the larger... Uh, miniatures and okay this is I should be looking at the back of the box so I know what the hell I'm talking about these are you know I don't know what they're called uh, they look like kind of like the speeder bikes like what you saw in the forest of Endor but not quite they're they're different but there's a couple of those in there and then you've got all of the, looks like these are going to be the Rebels, and then over here these are all the droids. Now interestingly, these are the, looks like the same plastic they use in all their other miniatures that has to be assembled with Crazy Glue. These, however, are uh, a regular, like a Styrene or an ABS or something. I already, I have another box of just some droids, and I opened that already just to see what they look like. And I uh, tested them out using this uh, Plastruct uh, Bondi, and it, and it does work with this plastic. That's a big deal, because Crazy Glue sucks, um, and it's not because I don't know how to use it. In, in my career, I probably used 55 gallons of it at least. But uh, it just gets on your fingers, and it's just a mess. And these are real small little 
fiddly miniatures. So using crazy glue on these would be a nightmare, probably. Um, whereas on the on the figures, the bigger ones, the characters, the people, the humans and whatnot, um, it's not so bad. But on these little guys, I think uh, crazy glue would be a nightmare. So it's good to know that uh, plastic model glue works on these, at least the bonding, which I've tested. Some other glues may or may not work. I don't know if this is styrene or ABS, and that makes a difference. Fortunately, bonding works on both. So uh, that's going to make putting these guys together a whole lot easier. So according to the packaging on the back here, it says 39 plastic miniatures, 8 plastic barricades, 15 dice, 3 movement tools, 1 range ruler, 8 unit cards, 40 upgrade cards. Okay, so those are upgrade cards. Interestingly, interestingly, they also are selling a set of upgrade cards separately. So maybe if, even if you don't buy this, if you just buy a, a box of droids or something, you can buy the upgrade cards as well. Um, 14 command cards, 12 battle cards, one round counter, 107 assorted tokens, and a learning to play booklet. I think, um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't played this game. Uh, I have a lot of the miniatures, and I'm, and I'm going to be playing it using a different set of rules. I'm playing with those miniatures with a different set of rules, um, because it's a set of rules that I already know. So I don't know much about these rules. Um, but I think this is basically their uh, quick start guide. I think you go online and download the full rule book. I think that's the way that works. But... So this is the new Star Wars Legion uh, droid. What the? Heck? There's a name for it. It's called the, uh, the Star Wars Legion. Blah blah blah. I don't know. It's the new starter set. So looks cool. Got everything you need to get started playing. Um, everything except you know a, a playing surface. But I mean you could just throw all this stuff down on a table. That's why they give you these barricades so you have things to hide behind. You can actually play a game. So it looks cool. I can't wait to get into the miniatures and start working on them and uh, painting them up and whatnot. Let's get the top back on this guy here and show you something else that's brand new right now. And this is from uh, Fantasy Flight Games, by the way. Put that to the side. This is the latest from Warlord Games, uh, one of my favorite game companies. And it's called the Black Seas Starter Set, the Master and, Com Master and Commander Set. I have not opened this up yet either, but I will confess that they sent me a, uh, a demo box about a month ago, which included most of the stuff that's in here. So I've, I, have seen, I have seen the models. I've seen the rule book and some other things, but this is the first time I've opened up the actual Master and Commander starter set. So what we have in here, well, first of all, worthy of noting, is this thread. This is a thread for rigging the, the sailing ships. And from what I've heard from a couple of people that have built some of these ships already, this is pretty good stuff. It's, it's a thread, but it, it doesn't fray like a normal cotton thread. It doesn't get all fuzzy. It, it looks right, and it's black, and it, so uh, people are saying, I sound like the president. People are saying it's good stuff. Um, all the dice necessary to play the game. Again, this, just like the Star Wars uh, Legion set, this is a starter set. If you buy this, this is everything you need to play the game. Of course, you're going to want to buy a lot more stuff because it's really cool. But with this, you can start and you can play a game. Okay, so it comes with three of the sprues that include the... Uh, oh, I'm going to get this terminology wrong. The frigates are the big ones. The smaller ones are... Uh, they're barks. They're barks. I think they're barkentines. Um, so you're going to get six of the barks and you're going to get three of the uh, of the frigates which is an unusual way of doing it because you couldn't really play a fair game you couldn't well I guess you could no you can't you can do two frigates versus one frigate 
and maybe more barks. I don't know. I don't know how all that works out. They have scenarios in here, so I'm sure they've got it all worked out. But uh, so two, four, six, so you get nine ships total. Three of the big ones, six of the small ones. You've got the, uh, I call them barks. I'm an idiot. They're brigs. They're brigantines. Uh, so brigs and frigates. Forget everything I said about barks. I was barking up the wrong tree. So there's an instruction sheet here that shows you how they go together. It's very simple, and they go together very nicely, they're, um, and they're durable. Some of the details are a little oversized, as they would have to be in this scale, like the masts and the, and the booms and things like that. I can show you here, not up close, because you're way over there, but I have, from the demo set they sent me, I, I threw together a few of the frigates and brigs. And I just shot some primer on them. I did, and I shot black primer on three and gray primer on the other, so we could just play a test game and try it and tell the difference between the two. But they're real durable and uh, and they look really cool. I'm looking forward to painting these guys and and then getting them rigged with all those sails and stuff like that. So what else is in here? We got okay, so we got all the boats. We got the dice. We got the smoke. We got the thread. In this little package here, one of the coolest features of these kits, if I can get to it, come on, all right, is the sails. The sails are printed on both sides. They're die cut. You just punch them out. They look really cool. Um, it's a sort of I don't know what it is. I mean, it's a paper, but it's a very glossy, heavy stock paper. So once you punch out one of these sails, you can sort of, you know, bend it a little and, and get some curvature to it and then, you know, glue it on the ship. And they really, really look nice. Um, they could do with a little more weathering, maybe, to kind of mix things up a little bit. But straight out of the box, they look pretty cool. And that's, that's a neat feature that they've done that. And like I said, they're printed on both sides, so whichever side of the ship you're looking at, it's going to look cool. They give you a whole bunch of flags and excuse me, a um, whole bunch of flags and streamers and whatnot. Anybody in France will have recognized that sound. <coughs> uh, wake markers. Wake markers are uh, very similar to the ones that come with uh, cruel seas. Some people are actually nicknaming this game Cruel Sails because it's kind of the same game in a way with changes, modifications, and frankly improvements. So that's kind of good. I think they, they learned a few things from, uh, from Cruel Seas. These are absolutely cool. These are uh, what we call the rat lines. They're printed on a clear acetate. It's easier to see with the white background on. Um, and you just cut them out and glue them on and they, they look pretty cool. I would probably try spraying them with a uh, with a clear uh, matte varnish to dull them down a little. Having them shiny might be kind of weird, um, but also having them dull might change the opacity of them, so I'm not sure. I'm going to experiment with that, but I'm going to use them either way because they look really cool. And then there's the, uh, the cards for the various ships, and there's one basically one card for every model. Both sides are identical. I'm not really sure why they did that, but why not, I guess. Um, and there, wait a minute, there might be, there might be, hold on a second, hold everything. They got brigs, they got brigs, they got frigates, and then there's something called large merchant. I might have been lying to you guys, some of these might be different. No, they're identical. Maybe some can be played as merchant or as or as brigs. You? Yeah. All right. So I'm confused. I'm confused. We'll have to look into that. But there's there appears to be two different types of ships, brigs and frigates. But there are three different kinds of cards: brigs, frigates, and something called large merchant. So I'm not sure how that works. These large merchant cards did not come in the demo pack that I got, 
so that's new to me, so that caught me off guard. But it looks like there might be three possible ship types here, and that might be why there's an odd number of these. So, but however, they all do look identical. They are, they are identical. So, not sure what the deal is there, but there you go. Then, it comes with a mat. This thing is pretty big. I think it folds out um, about four feet by four feet, I believe. Maybe even four by six. It's just a big ocean mat. Nothing real special there, but it's, it's cool that it's included. There's a lot of really good uh, game mats available now for this game uh, from companies like uh, Cigar Box Battle Mats or uh, Deep Cut Studios. They've all got good ocean mats and some with uh, islands and things like that. And speaking of islands, if you don't want to build three-dimensional islands, there are some die-cut ones here that come out. You can just plop them down on your uh, on your on this thing or your mat or whatever. Some rulers here where they have the turning lines on them. Uh, interestingly, uh, Cruel Seas was uh, measured in centimeters, which I don't like because I don't use centimeters and my brain doesn't think in centimeters. But I know most of the rest of the world does, so I understand why they did that. But for some reason, this one, they switched back to inches, and that makes me happy because I can look at something and say, oh, that's 18 inches. I can't, I can't guess how many centimeters that is because I'm just, my brain don't work that way. So there's a bunch more die cut stuff here. And then, of course, there is the rule book. The rule book is a lot of pages. Yes, I was right. It is a lot of pages. Uh, 95, 96, 97 pages with a quick reference sheet on the back. It's very well done. has a lot of cool pictures and artwork and history and things in it. Um, it's very straightforward, easy to learn. If you've played Cruel Seas, this is going to be very easy to learn. The only real big difference is, uh, well, different dice. Um, activation's a little different. And dealing with the wind is different and also when you when a, when a weapon hits a target you don't roll for damage the the weapon does a certain amount of damage and that's just fixed it just does two or one or three points or, wh or whatever it may be so once you've rolled you know three guns two of them hit each one does two points of damage for four damage simple just like that um, the wind plays into this game, of course, because they're sailing ships, and that makes it really interesting. There's a very basic wind rule in the quick start section, and later on in the book there's more advanced wind rules, which change how fast you can go, what, what level of sail you can deploy, depending on the wind, and you can even get into the wind and stalled out. There's, there's a better word for that, a nautical term, but basically you get into the wind and you're just stopped. You have to try to get out of that. And you might just be stuck there uh, as a sitting duck. So uh, the book is very well done. I've read through most of it. I haven't read uh, the scenarios because I haven't gotten that far. The, the basic game that we played just to try this out was just a few boats versus each other, and we just went and bashed heads, and it was really fun. Um, so that's the starter set. It's a cool game. Uh, if, like I said, if you've played Cruel Seas, you're going to understand this very quickly um, with, a, with a few minor changes and, like I said, improvements. Um, the models are really cool. The models are what got me on this one. And the, the models are what get me on all games because I'm a model maker first. But honestly, you know, if I'm telling the truth, I, I don't have a lot of interest in this era the 1770s or the 1830s. It's not really my cup of tea. Um, but it's the models what got me. So, uh, so, I'm, so I'm playing it. I'm going to build up a small army, a small navy, sorry. And I'm going to do Americans, I think. And there are a few um, additional add-ons already available for this. And this is just one of them, the USS Constitution. That's the one I'm going to build. Um, a little bit bigger than these frigates. It's a, I don't know how many guns. It's got a bunch of guns. It's a pretty awesome looking ship. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build that pretty soon. 
Um, these are all plastic injection molded. The Constitution is a resin, resin hull, and I believe metal, yeah, resin hull with uh, metal masts and, and other details. And the, the work on this model is really, really nice. The work on all of them is really, really nice, but this one especially, I, I really like this nice. So, that's a couple of the big things that have been released while well, I've been moving my shop and my home across the country. I wanted to tell you guys about them and uh, just force myself to get back into podcasting because I love doing this. And I want to tell you guys about all the really cool stuff that's happening in the gaming world. So, with that, I think I'm going to put these guys away, put an end to this, and uh, just do another one real soon, hopefully. And you guys will be seeing a lot more of these from me. Uh, these videos, uh, new product videos, tutorials, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, we're going to do some audio podcasts real soon, too. I'm probably going to do a real short one tonight. But then i got a couple of buddies from back home in California that are going to Skype in, and we're going to do a, a little We're going to do a little freeway. Uh, so that'll be fun. Um, so we'll get that out in about a week. So that's it for now. Black Seas is out, or as we like to call it, Cruel Sails. And... Star Wars Legion, very cool things, cool miniatures, cool games. That's it for now, guys, from beautiful Tennessee. Keep on gaming.